everybody. This is Amelia Thompson, your host for today's Worth Electronic webinar. Uh, and also pleased to announce that our webinars will be returning in 2023. We are in the process of getting some new topics all lined up for you. And if you have interesting topics that you want to learn about, make sure that you complete our survey at the end, or you can even comment in our questions box right now. Let us know what you want to learn about in 2023. For now, I, uh, I am ex excited about today's webinar. It's Differential Pressure Sensors for Industrial Applications. Uh, partnered with DigiKey Electronics, the exclusive sponsor of all Worth Electronic webinars, and joining me is Naned Mehta. He is our go-to guru for all things sensors. I guess, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but we're going to get into the metaverse, huh? I'll refrain from all the jokes now. Uh, now, if you have any questions during today's webinar, make sure you are asking them in the questions box. You'll see a little bit of a question mark at the top of your screen. You can test it out right now. Let us know what type of webinars you want to be seen in 2023. Uh, we do have a couple EMC, lots of EMC coming through. That makes sense. If your questions don't get answered, maybe we need to go into a little bit of detail. Maybe you think of a question at the end of today's webinar, then you can uh, simply ask them in the questions box anyway, and we'll get back to you after the webinar. Just look for our follow-up email at webinarteam at we-online.com. We got you covered. Now, because you registered for today's webinar, you will automatically receive the video on demand as well as the presented slides when they become available within the next week, hopefully. Simply look for the link in your email. That again is webinarteam at we-online.com. Make sure you have that uh, whitelisted in your email. Don't miss out on our next webinar. We're gonna skip a week to November 8th. It's efficient filter connection in the layout. Register online at www.we-online.com slash webinars. Now I'm going to hand it over. Let's begin today's Worth Electronic webinar with Naned Meta Differential Pressure Sensors for Industrial Applications, partnered with DigiKey Electronics. Uh, good morning and good afternoon or good evening, everyone from all over the world. Uh, to the participants who are joining, I am Ninad Meta, and I will take you through this webinar today and just to be safe i will turn off my camera so there are no issues with the bandwidth so uh let's have a look at the agenda uh we will start with uh, what is uh, pressure or what kind of pressures are there uh then we will go ahead with uh, mem space pressure sensors and uh, uh uh, look into which types of pressure sensors are available and how the pressure sensors have evolved throughout the years uh, to show the scale of integration in the pressure sensors and have a look at uh, some of the applications and also shed a light on what type of pressure sensors to use, for example, pressure or flow sensor or even to use a digital sensor or an analog sensor. And in the end, uh, I would like to show some of the uh, pressure sensors from our uh, virtual electronic portfolio and focus on also the individualization uh, service that we provide. So what is pressure? So basically pressure is the force applied per unit area and we all are aware about the atmospheric pressure which is due to the atmosphere around the earth. So basically when you are near to the surface of the earth, you have a higher pressure due to more atmosphere. And if you go higher up the altitude, then you will have a less pressure. So depending on where you are, what time of the year it is, or what time of the day or weather, the atmospheric pressure will be always changing. When we talk about uh, uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, this is always measured with uh, respect to the vacuum, which is zero. So the atmospheric pressure is an absolute pressure. So absolute pressure is always positive because uh, it is always referenced to a absolute vacuum or zero uh, referenced. 
On the other hand, uh, if we take uh, reference uh, as uh, atmospheric pressure instead of vacuum and then measure the pressure, we can either have a positive pressure or a negative pressure, and this is called a gauge pressure. And the last is the differential pressure, which is nothing but the difference between any two pressure. So it can be either positive, negative, or anything. For in, in principle, an absolute pressure can also be called a differential pressure theoretically. Um, moving ahead. Uh, we talk about MEMS based uh, pressure sensors. So here there are different kinds of uh, MEMS technology available in pressure sensors, namely piezoresistive technology or capacitive technolo technology for uh, differential pressure sensors. Piezoresistive technology is more popular, so we are going to focus on the piezoresistive technology. So this is based on the piezoresistivity where the uh, resistivity of the material changes when the material is under stress or any force or pressure. So basically what uh, we do here is that we have a silicon substrate and which is etched from the back side and with an etch stop chemical etch stop layer we can uh, stop the etching so that we have a very thin silicon membrane. On the top side if you see then we have a thin membrane which is uh, suspended in the air and on the edges we dope the pizza resistors so we have the pizza resistor which is on which are which are doped on the suspended silicon membrane and whenever there is some force or pressure applied on top of the membrane which is very thin so very small deviation can also be uh, can also cause the deviation in the membrane and that's why the Pizzo resistivity of the um, uh, pizza resistor will change, and this will be uh, the pizza, uh, the material will be under maybe compression or tension, depending on what type of or what and what direction the pressure has been applied. So these pizza resistors are electronically connected in a Winston bridge, and they are supplied with uh, 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 voltage. And whenever there is a pressure from the top side, because uh, because of this pressure or force, uh, the resistance of the pizza resistor will change and then bridge will be in imbalance and we will have some voltage drop across uh, the Western bridge. This voltage drop in the end is directly proportional to the watt pressure is being applied on top of the membrane. So we will have some millivolt output. It is important to notice here that this output is purely analog for sure, and this is also not calibrated or also not compensated. Some benefits of this uh, piezoresistive technology is that the sensors or the output characteristic is uh, highly linear because of the uh, resistors and uh, it is easy to produce and there are no complex structure inside, so it is also not so costly in terms of production. Uh, disadvantage is that uh, the Pizzo resistive technology is uh, very sensitive to the temperature changes. So if the temperature changes, then the output may also change. Now let's uh, go back to the previous slide where we showed different pressures and now we can apply the pizzo resistive technology and have all three different kinds of sensor. So for example, here we have in gray the pizza resistive silicon part, which is sealed inside a vacuum so that we have a sealed vacuum during production. And then we encapsulate it and then through uh, one outlet port, the ambient pressure can get inside. So the pressure measurement is done always against the sealed vacuum. So we have an absolute pressure sensor. For the gauge pressure sensors, uh, not, we have a hole on one side of the sensor and the other side of the sensor uh, is where you apply the pressure. So basically in the end we are measuring the pressure against the atmospheric pressure and we have a gate sensor. Not very far from the construction of a gate sensor is the differential pressure sensor where you have possibility to connect two different pipes uh, with two different ports and you can measure the difference between port P1 and port P2 so that you have in the end a differential pressure sensor. Next in my opinion is one of the important slides to understand what the uh, scale of integration is doing in terms of the pressure sensor for example what type of uh, uh, sensors uh, pressure sensors are available today in the market. 
the most basic ones are just the MEMS uh, measurement cell, what we saw, the silicon, only the bare silicon die where you have the pizza resistor in Winston Bridge and some uh, measurement points to take the output. So this is the purely MEMS cell, which is purely analog. It is also not calibrated or also not temperature compensated. And this is available as a bare die or a package die, which you can use in your end applications. And also then you need to take care if you are one, you want to have it connected to some microcontroller, then you have to take care of designing an amplifier and also put it to uh, an, put an ADC so that you have a digital signal. So these things then at the end application needs to uh, take care. Another type is the amplified sensor. So now, uh, with the measurement PEM cell, we have the amplifier which amplifies the output signal and also in some cases we have a passively, uh, passively uh, compensation which, which with uh, laser trimmed resistors where you do the temperature compensation of the output with a fixed uh, temperature with the laser trimmed resistors. So usually these are both uh, calibrated and compensated, but in the applications where a dynamic temperature is being used or there is a big difference between a temperature in the application, then this sensor might not uh, have accurate output at all of the temperature because uh, the passively compensation has a very narrow temperature uh, window. And the third one is the integrated sensors. And now we have for all the calibration and compensation a dedicated IC on the board, which uh, has also a signal processor and also memory. So whenever we get a signal from the uh, MEMS die, it is then amplified, uh, digitized with an ADC and the values are stored in the memory and during the calibration process in the production, the calibration coefficients are also stored so that during the application or when you fire up the sensor, these coefficients are loaded and you get always the uh, digital uh, or fully calibrated output and there are also digital and analog interfaces inside the uh, IC so that you can directly connect them to um, microcontroller or host controller. So from a basic sensing cell to an integrated sensor, uh, there are different types of sensors available and this is the, the which one to use depends vastly on what type of application uh, you are aiming for. Uh, when we talk about applications, uh, there are different kind, many types of applications where the pressure sensors are being used. Uh, some of them are, for example, smart buildings uh, where in HVAC systems or in white goods, uh, uh, washing machines, dishwashers or coffee machines or even the smart vacuum robots where the pressure sensors are being employed in the HVAC systems. Also multiple sensors are used or more than one sensors are used and they are all connected to in a bus and connected to one microcontroller. Even in health monitoring, for example, blood pressure monitoring, you have a differential pressure sensor employed. So these applications always uh, demand, for example, low power consumption, uh, when there are applications, for example, blood pressure monitoring, they are battery operated. So uh, the, the sensor should have a very low power consumption. Also, many times they are in, employed in higher volume for white goods or HVAC systems and multiple sensors are connected uh, with one another or on a single bus. In the industrial applications or the smart factory uh, for pump monitoring or pneumatic controls or robotic arm controls, the pressure sensors are employed or even an interesting application is for the room pressure monitoring, for example, for the operation theaters or even for clean rooms where the rooms should have a higher pressure with respect to the corridor pressure so that the bacteria or contaminants cannot enter the room and the environment inside is uh, always clean. For these purposes, the pressure sensors are used and these kind of application require a real time monitoring so that you can always have a look at what is the status of the system. They should have a precise measurement, accurate measurement and also the response, they should respond to uh, this should respond quickly to pressure changes. 
Let's have a look at the HVAC application in details and how the HVAC industry has evolved throughout the years uh, because also because of the climate change now more and more uh, HVAC systems are being employed and they are always al already being uh, made made better and better throughout the years. So initially in these systems analog pressure switches were used now we are using the pressure sensors which with which you can still for example, control your smart thermostat and uh, have a perfect uh, air quality or air temperature inside. And now more and more connected sensor networks are being employed. So there are more than one sensors inside, for example, temperature, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, gas sensor, and also pressure sensors are Im Im uh, implemented. And these all sensors are connected uh, to a host controller and they should give a uh, digital output as well. So the systems are getting low maintenance, smart, energy efficient, uh, and also more and more automated. And this also requires in the end to have the sensors compatible with these kind of systems. So the sensors with long-term stability or lower power consumption or uh, IoT ready or uh, ready to be connected uh, to a wireless system easily uh, or, or plug and play solution for the sensors are more suitable for these kind of applications. In the HVAC, uh, another important uh, monitoring is the filter monitoring because of uh, current corona situation. Uh, the indoor air quality is now more important than ever because we now spend more than 70% of our lives indoors and indoor, indoor, indoor air has more pollutants than, than the outside air and we breathe the same air where being indoors. So every HVAC system has a uh, filter so that uh, you get a clean air inside and with time the filter gets uh, dirty and it is very important that you change the filter at the right time. For example, if you change the filter too late, then your filter is too clogged and you might not have enough uh, airflow and your cooling or heating efficiency is not enough. Uh, this will also lead to higher energy consumption and higher costs. And in the end, because the filter is not fully in, fully compatible or fully uh, functional, uh, you will have a poor indoor air quality. On the other hand, if you change the filter too early, then you have increased material cost and waste of materials, which is not environmental friendly. So it is very important to change or clean the filter at the right time. So a solution would be to use a smart filter monitoring system where you have a pressure, differential pressure sensor connected both ports on either side of the filter. And then whenever filter is clogged, there is a very high pressure difference between the high pressure side and low pressure side. So here, at P1, the pressure starts to build up. And after a certain threshold, the sensor will alert the microcontroller or the system that it's time to change a filter. Some more applications are for flow control and regulations where ventilator fan control, uh, for ventilator control or fan control, you can also use the differential pressure sensor or also, as we mentioned, for the constant air pressure control, you can use the differential pressure sensor in a gauge configuration where you can have a constant pressure built up inside the vent. Uh, for the flow uh, measurement, many times a pressure sensor or even the flow sensor is being used. So this also depends on your application, what kind of sensor you need to employ because pressure sensor and flow sensor in the end, they, com they are completely different. Uh, they work on completely different technologies. The pressure sensor we saw here, uh, with the membrane. Uh, on the other hand, the flow sensors have a small heater and the air is uh, passing through the heated uh, element so that air gets heated up. And then because of the heat uh, dispersion between uh, the vent or, or between the inside the sensor, there is a, a different uh, air temperatures and this can be measured uh, through electrically uh, what kind of, uh, what what is the flow of the, the system is. If we compare the flow sensor and uh, pressure sensors, uh, then they are completely uh, different. Uh, for example, uh, flow sensor is uh, usually calibrated at certain uh, with certain gases. So in the application where uh, another other gases needs to be used, they needs to be they need to be again calibrated. 
this is not the case for the pressure sensors uh, also because there is a heater so the heater heats up the air and it consumes a small amount of energy and also heating of the air also takes a little time so basically the flow sensors are usually have a slower response time and also consumes a bit more power compared to the MEMS based pressure sensors but on the other hand these sensors uh, flow sensors are suitable for ultra low pressure measurement because they have a very good uh, zero pressure or zero flow stability because there is no moving parts inside basically or the system is not under any stress uh, but the uh, flow sensors are uh, not very much resistant to contamination because the air is flowing directly through the sensor so whenever there are the sensor gets clogged you do not get a correct uh, uh, flow or pressure output which is not the case in the MEMS based uh, uh, pressure sensors because whenever there is some contamination there will be a delayed frequency response uh, because of the contamination or you might have some offset due to the contamination contamination which uh, you can get rid with uh, the help of the host controller or write uh, some uh, code so that you get rid of this um, offset then we also can compare different output based on uh, sensors usually the integrated sensor pressure sensor usually have analog or digital output and it is important to see what kind of application uh, I uh, what kind of application I'm going to use these sensors for and based on that I can choose the output whether I need a digital output or an anal analog output for example uh, the analog sensors have very high accuracy but uh, digital sensors have a higher resolution based on the type of EDC uh, you use. Um, the digital sensors can have a very low current consumption overall because uh, the sensors have inbuilt uh, interrupt functionality sometimes where you say uh, the host controller uh, uh, is put to sleep and only the sensor needs to be active and the controller doesn't have to always ask for the new pressure data. Also, digital sensors usually have the temperature sensors on chip, so you can also get some temperature data. So at the end, you might get one less uh, uh, material on your bomb list and use the temperature information from the digital sensor itself. But uh, on the other hand, if some application requires some variable current output or variable voltage output, then purely analog sensors need to be used and for the application which require wireless connectivity or cloud connectivity where your sensors are directly send the data to a wireless or wireless module then it's better to have a digital output so that you have a kind of a plug and play uh, system where it's very easy to connect the sensor to the wireless module and uh, have data ha have the access of the data remotely let's now have a look at some of the uh, pressure sensors what we have uh, in our portfolio so we have uh, as a standard differential pressure sensor the low medium and high pressure range which uh, starts from 0 point minus 0 point plus or minus 1 kilopascal to 1500 kilopascal these sensors are 5 volt uh, uh, works at 5 volts and they have 15 bits of uh, ADC resolution and the sensors are I square C and analog so digital I square C and analog output both of them are available in parallel so you can either choose uh, to read out the data with the digital interface or also have an analog output so this are the fixed configuration so in this configuration so the sensor is uh, perfectly suitable for uh, multiple sensor networks where you need more than one sensors on the same bus or even in the battery driven applications or for real time monitoring uh, with the digital interface you get a uh, fast data transfer or even for wireless data transmission the sensor is suitable but in case uh, these fixed configurations are not enough for your application, then we also provide the individualized differential pressure sensors. For example, you might have a horizontal uh, nozzles uh, instead of the straight nozzles so that it's easier to connect the tubes to the sensors or even different uh, pressure measurement range uh, based on your applications or even uh, operating voltage can be reduced to 3.3 volt for battery operated devices or even have a 
lower uh, resolution so that you can have a faster response time or additional SPI digital interface or even uh, have an inbuilt alarm so that the uh, pressure uh, whenever the pressure is high or low below a certain threshold the sensor alerts the microcontroller so this could be a very good example for power saving uh, applications let's uh, have a look at the cross section of the uh, differential pressure sensor how does it look we have uh, in the standard product we have two ports on the top side uh, the port one connects directly to the top side of the MEMS element and the MEMS element is directly placed on a ceramic so that it provides a better thermal and mechanical stability so that it has a better uh, offset performance and the other side of the MEMS element is directly connected through a hole in via an embedded pneumatic channel to the other side of the port here and the MEMS and ASICs are then bonded to the PCB so in the end we have a leadless SMD package so you can also do hand soldering if required for uh, prototyping. The block diagram uh, as we saw that we have a MEM cell here so this is a sensing element and then an ASIC connected to the MEM cell so the ASIC includes the amplifier and also an on-chip temperature sensor so these are then multiplex and through an ADC they are converted in the digital form and stored in and stored in the uh, digital signal processor and during the production the calibration parameters are also stored inside the memory so that each time you get you measure the pressure data the calibration uh, parameters are also loaded and you get the digital output through the digital interface which is fully calibrated as mentioned we also have an analog output in parallel so the analog output is then go then going through one more step of digital to analog converter so the digital output is again converted into an analog output through DSE and then you get a fully calibrated and fully compensated analog output so I hear what analog output we get is not a purely analog output and this is fully calibrated output in the end we do also offer an all inclusive evaluation boards which makes the tube connections very easy for your prototyping for example for the standard products uh, sensors you can connect the tubes uh, of a two millimeter diameter directly to the sensors for the horizontal nozzle the sensors are, uh, the ports are barbed so they give you better connection with the sensor um, but with our evaluation board you also get an adapter and o-rings for the uh, for the uh, ceiling which uh, you can use for your prototyping where you can use the standard six millimeter uh, pipes uh, to connect the sensor to and this is uh, very important in terms of uh, mechanical stability because the electrical joints uh, for the sensor or the soldering joints are not uh, made to withstand the mechanical stress uh, that comes with the pipes connected so when we use this adapter the there is less stress on the sensor and also in terms of hazardous gases the uh, when when there is a danger of leaking leakage uh, this provides an additional safety the cat file for the adapter is already available on our website so maybe you can also use it uh, for your uh, applications or maybe modify as well depending on your requirements that brings us to the end of our webinar and in summary I would like to uh, show what our sensor uh, uh, offer uh, as mentioned I square C or analog output uh, and analog output and also inbuilt temperature sensors is also available uh, the sensors are based on pizza resistive and they provide the digital calibrated and compensated uh, data so uh, kind of a, a plug and play applications uh, where you can connect the sensor directly to a host controller and send the data to cloud very easily we have no MOQs uh, there is also an evaluation board as mentioned available for your faster prototyping and uh, we have a software development click uh, kit available so that you don't have to go through the whole programming process you can just load the SDK uh, from our website and use it on your controller 
that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and it's time for now some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nanad, for presenting today. We do have a few questions rolling on in. And again, if you have any questions, simply ask them in the questions box. Our first question here, can I use differential pressure sensors for liquid or fluids? Uh, unfortunately, no. The sensors are only suitable for the gases, so they are, have no passivation inside. Uh, so the MEMS uh, and the electronics is all open to the air or the media inside. So unfortunately, you can only use it for the gases. And that actually answers a lot more questions that are rolling on in right now. Our next question here, do the sensors have position sensitivity? Um, theoretically, yes, because as we saw that the, these are a suspended, there is a suspended membrane, which has also effects of gravity. So, but the, the, the membrane is very small uh, in microns. So more or less, if we are talking about high pressure or medium pressure ranges, there is no position, position sensitivity, whether you mount it upside down or uh, uh, 90 degrees, uh, but maybe for a one millibar or lower pressure sensors, there should be some position sensitivity. So in the application, you have to look if you mount it upside down, if there is more uh, offset or less offset, then you can compensate with the microcontroller. Thank you for that explanation. A uh, few more questions here, and then we are going to wrap up today's webinar. Again, if you have any questions, ask them in the questions box, or if you think of them later, simply reply to our follow-up email from webinar team at we-online.com. Our next question, how often can the sensor, uh, how often does the sensor need to be calibrated? Um, as mentioned, you don't need to calibrate the sensors afterwards because the, the calibration is performed during the production and the, the, the calibration data is always stored on the on-chip memory. And this gets, again, every time reloaded when you power up the sensor. So you don't need to recalibrate it after you, uh, you want design in or use inside your application. Maybe through the years of use, it, there is some drift, which is the degradation of the membrane. And there is some, due to some drift, there might be some uh, offset uh, drift uh, error compensation that needs to be done, but this can always be done through the microcontroller. And also after the sensor is being in, being in application, one can do this. Thank you for that. Um, our next question here, how can you compare the capacitive based sensor with pressure sensors or in the combination of them? Uh, I mean, I mean, capacitive based sensor is a completely different technology than the pizza resist. In the end, both of them are uh, pressure sensors, but completely different uh, technologies. One uses the uh, resistance as a change and the other has a capacitance as a change for example it's a the capacitive sensor uses a parallel plate capacitance uh, as a principle when the uh, membrane is deflected the dif distance between those two the, the the two surfaces is different and the capacitance in the end also changes but this is also then uh, in a western bridge but it is capacitance so it's the output is non-linear and then because the resistance has a linear output it is easier uh, or, or easier to, to calculate or do the, uh, the transfer curve is more linear, I would say, in the end. Excellent. A uh, couple more questions here, and then we will wrap things up. Where can we get the information of the Worth Electronic Prototype Evaluation Board? Uh, just uh, go on to the website, and there is a... Uh, the, the evaluation board is also available and on the website you will also find the user manuals and as well as the CAD file for the adapter so that you can use your CAD, the CAD file and directly print your adapter for yourself or 3D print it. Uh, for now, you can also 3D print very easily nowadays so you can have a prototype for your, yourself very easily. You can modify the CAD file if you need some modifications. And I'll make sure that I do include the link directly to the evaluation board on the follow-up email. 
Uh, our next question here, does Worth Electronic have any pressure sensors for higher temperatures, such as 105 degrees Celsius? Unfortunately, as of now, we don't have it, but uh, thank you for the input and maybe we can have a look if we can uh, still uh, expand our measurement or our operating pressure uh, temperature range, because it would be interesting also to expand the temperature range. And the great thing about technology is that it is constantly changing and always advancing. So hopefully in the future, we do have some of those higher temperature uh, sensors, pressure sensors, differential, everything. Um, sure. Our final question here, what is the accuracy and the total error band? Uh, the accuracy depends, uh, depends on what uh, the kind of uh, measurement range we are uh, in right now. Uh, it's, uh, I just need to check the exact number. I don't have it in my head, but uh, the accuracy range from 0.1% uh, uh, and goes up to 1%. And this depends what kind of uh, uh, pressure uh, uh, range uh, we are looking into. For example, for 0. Uh, one kilopascal, which is the smallest one, the total accuracy is 2.5%, but uh, for the 10 bar sensor, it is uh, very high accuracy. So for example, it's 0.1%, uh, but maybe this information is already available in the data sheets uh, and could be easily found. All right, thank you so much, Naned, for presenting today's Worth Electronic webinar. We appreciate having you. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you very much, Amelia. Uh, I wish you a nice evening or good day based on where you are from, but thanks a lot in the end. And thank you all for listening for uh, listening to today's Worth Electronic webinar, of course, partnered with our exclusive sponsors, DigiKey Electronics. Don't forget to listen to the new Worth Electronic What's Up Radio podcast. We're bringing our application notes, our webinars, um, our blogs, everything to an audio format. We are switching things up a little bit, and we are hopefully going to be uh, presenting the podcast on a video format as well. We are trying to change that. Also, don't forget to take the survey at the end of our webinars. There's a question about what topics you would like to hear from uh, in the upcoming year. Our webinars will be returning in 2023, so make sure you answer that question accordingly. And for our gamers, we're gonna try something a little different next year. Hopefully we will also be presenting the webinars or streaming it to um, my personal Twitch account. So just be listening to that as well. Uh, next webinar, don't forget to register. We're skipping a week on to November 8th. It's efficient filter connection in the layout. You can register online at www.we-online.com slash webinars, or you can also click the link in the follow-up email. I'm Amelia Thompson, and I hope to see you soon.